Here we go, Root River. I'm in Houston, Houston, Minnesota. Today I'm riding the Root River Trail in southeast Minnesota. I'm gonna scoot the route. The Root River, it's in the Driftless area. It's a great place. Today, I'm cycling the Root River State Trail from the eastern terminus in Houston, that's Houston, Minnesota. The trail goes west, upstream, through Rushford, Peterson, Whalen, Lanesboro, and Fountain. Fountain's at the western terminus. I stumbled across this trail while researching another trail in Minnesota, the Paul Bunyan. So this trail, the Root River, is turning out to be a real find. The Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul, and Pacific Railroad abandoned these tracks in 1979. And the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, the DNR, went to work right away converting the line to a rail trail. And by 1986, the Root River State Trail was officially open. Ten years later, the Harmony Preston Trail opened. This is like one of my newest all-time favorite trails. The Root River in southeast Minnesota carved out a nice wide valley, which is now mostly rich farmland. For most of the way, the trail follows the historic Bluff Country National Scenic Byway. The trail winds its way through some very picturesque and charming little towns, dating back to the 1850s. There's a lot of history in this valley. The trail is used by hikers, bikers, rollerbladers, cross-country skiers in the winter, we even saw some folks float in the Root River. This area is known for its Norwegian roots. My wife wants to get a job here at the Lefsa factory. Oofta. For the first few miles west of Houston, it doesn't really feel like a typical rail trail. For one thing, the trail kind of twists and turns through the forest, instead of going relatively straight with wide curves that could be handled easily by a train. Also, west of Houston, there's a real steep section of the trail. It feels more like a road than a railroad. Between Houston and Rushford, the trail follows the highway for a short bit, but mostly, it follows the river away from the road, providing for plenty of quiet and solitude. But then, the trail crosses a long bridge and you find yourself on the other side of the river. I love a trail that follows a river. Rushford has plenty of services off trail. Things like restaurants, grocery and convenience stores. Make sure to check out the old depot in Rushford. There's plenty of picnic areas and rest stops along the trail. Some shelters too. There's even camping nearby. The best part of the trail is probably between Peterson and Lanesboro. Peterson is a really small, cute little town with a large gnome presence. Does a large gnome presence mean that you have a gnome problem? Lanesboro has a really cool old historic downtown area. Lanesboro was voted one of the prettiest little towns in America. And it's a great place to stop for ice cream. The Root River Trail is a 42 mile long paved rail trail. It follows the Root River through Minnesota's Driftless Area. Wait, Minnesota has a Driftless Area? 
Yeah, Minnesota has a driftless area. So does Illinois, Iowa, and Wisconsin. All right, so over millions of years, Earth's climate changes. It goes through periodic cold spells and warm spells. The cold spells we call ice ages, and the warm spells we call not ice ages. During one of those cold spells, a continental glacier formed at the North Pole, and as it grew, it slid its way southward. Beneath the large continental glacier, there's a large amount of debris, rocks and gravel and pebbles that the glacier just picks up along the way as it moves. The glacier acts like a big bulldozer that just pushes large amounts of material and leaves the affected area mostly flat. This material that moves along with the glacier is called glacial drift. And during a warm spell or a non-ice age, the glacier melts and leaves behind large deposits of this glacial drift. And in most places in the northern Midwest, you don't have to dig very deep to find a thick layer of glacial drift. Well, in the corners of southwest Wisconsin, southeast Minnesota, northeast Iowa, and northwest Illinois, where these four states all come together, there's almost no glacial drift, leaving geologists to believe that this so-called driftless area was skipped over by the last glacial event. In the driftless area, there's like no evidence of glaciation. The continental glacier that flattened most of the northern Midwest just kind of bypassed this area that we now call the driftless area. If you can catch my drift. Most of Minnesota is pretty flat, and it's known for its many lakes. That's why it's called the Land of 10,000 Lakes. But this area, because of the topography, has very few lakes. Instead, the water drains down valleys and the many waterways, including the Root River, and eventually into the Mississippi River. Yeah, they call it the Bluffland region here in southeast Minnesota. It's a unique landscape with many waterways that have cut rocky limestone outcrops into the steep forested valleys. The driftless area has diverse topography and ecology. They kind of go hand in hand. Because of the area's unique topography, there's a great diversity of habitats for living things and this supports a wide variety of plant and animal communities. It's not just the ridge tops and the valley floors. The sunny south facing hillsides support dry communities, almost desert like, compared to the shady north facing hillsides, which are much wetter and support communities that prefer a more northern climate. All these different community types in close proximity to each other is what creates the area's great biodiversity. These hills and ravines harbor unique ecological communities, some reminiscent of the Ice Age. Be on the lookout for wild turkey, deer, and birds of prey like hawks and eagles. There's lots of songbirds in the area too. Also, keep an eye out for the resident reptiles. This area is kind of known for snakes. Sometimes you see them sunbathing on the trail. Probably best just to give them some space and leave them to their business. They are a protected species. And try not to get run over by the maintenance crew. Check out the Owl Center in Houston. It's a place dedicated to the conservation of wild owls of all species. As you ride west of Lanesboro, the valley narrows and the rocky bluffs get closer together. The Root River kind of meanders back and forth in its floodplain that it's been creating for the last hundreds of thousands of years. When the river meanders away from the trail, it seems like there's a cornfield or a soybean field between the trail and the river. But just as often, the river meanders back to the trail and this is where you get some good views of the river. The Root River is actually a really pretty river. I wish there was better access to the river. In this section, there's really no way to get down to the river. 
you know, just so you can dip your toes in once in a while. The trail follows the south branch of the river as it splits off from the main branch. There's a 17 mile spur called the Harmony Preston Trail that splits off the main trail just west of Lanesboro. It's mostly gradual uphill all the way to Harmony. We didn't have a chance to ride that section of trail. West of the confluence, the trail becomes noticeably uphill all the way to Fountain. Fountain is known as the sinkhole capital of Minnesota. The thick limestone bedrock and the karst topography produced about 10,000 sinkholes in this county. Maybe we should call this area the land of 10,000 sinkholes. It's getting late in the day and Fountain is the end of the trail for me. This little corner of Minnesota is truly special. Because the area is driftless, it has a unique look and feel to it. The Root River helped carve this landscape. The cute little historic towns all up and down the Root Valley invite you to step back in time, slow down, and enjoy the local culture. Who would have thought that in the land of 10,000 lakes, there'd be a charming little valley like the Root? There's plenty of campgrounds, B&Bs, grocery stores and restaurants to make for a comfortable stay. My wife and I stayed at a B&B in Peterson and we rode the trail in two days. We rode the trail from east to west, which is gradually uphill. When I come back to do this trail again, I'll be sure to do it the other way, from west to east. Take advantage of the gradual downhill. Just want to say thanks, as always, to the fine people of Minnesota to their dedication to the rail trails. The Root River Trail was an unexpected gem that we found and had to explore. The driftless topography gives it a unique look and feel, so you gotta check it out. Glad you came along. Hope to see you down the trail. Thanks for watching. Now go ride your bike.